Navajo Nation President Jonathan Nez, thank you for connecting with New Mexico PBS this afternoon. Hey, Antonia, thank you for having us on, on the show. And the Navajo Nation is one of the largest tribes in the United States with the largest land base. Um, you and your administration took COVID-19 information and news serious from the start. As of Thursday, the nation had reported 69 positive cases. What is the biggest challenge right now facing the Navajo Nation? Well, we have, uh, Antonia, we have a um, shelter-in-place order uh, throughout the Navajo Nation. So <clears throat> we're wanting all our, our Navajo uh, members and residents to, you know, stay at home. I think that's the safest place to be here and also to uh, minimize uh, the spread of COVID-19 coronavirus throughout our Navajo Nation. So uh, right now, the, the biggest concern that we have is getting the needed equipment uh, to our first responders. Uh, and I guess that's like that throughout the country. You know, it's just not Navajo Nation. You know, we, we're trying to get uh, personal protection equipment to uh, those that are um, giving out um, food and necessities to our most vulnerable, which are our elders and our uh, those that are being cared for by uh, health care providers. And <clears throat> so we're just trying to do, uh, do with what we have. And we did get some equipment from the um, strategic national stockpile uh, that's coming into the states and coming up into the Navajo Nation. So we appreciate <clears throat> that resource coming in. But, you know, some of the resources from the federal government has yet to reach uh, Indian country and has yet to reach the Navajo Nation. And, you know, that first uh, allocation of dollars, that $8.3 billion, and out of that $8.3, $40 million, uh, went to the tribes. To this day, Antonia, we, we haven't get one penny of that. And there's just so many uh, hurdles. And I, I just saw the CDC, that $40 million CDC is saying, uh, the federal government is saying is you got to apply for it as a grant. And <clears throat> we have to do all the paperwork. And the grant is the application deadline is in the next week or two weeks. I, I don't quite remember. But, you know, we have to wait for that uh, uh, deadline before we even get any of those dollars to the Navajo Nation. and But yet that first $8.3 billion, a lot of that money has uh, gone to states directly and, and yet tribes have to uh, apply for that and as a pass through through the CDC or pass through through the states. And, you know, it's frustrating. But, you know, I just want everyone to understand that it's there's no difference here. Even the Funds that we get from various uh, federal allocations have to go through the states or the uh, programs and departments of the federal government before it comes to tribes. So that needs to be reevaluated. And um, I'm hopeful that our congressional leaders are listening and, and those changes need to happen. We need those resources immediately into Indian country and here on the Navajo Nation. And as you're urging Navajo citizens to stay home to um, limit the spread of COVID-19, there's a lot of people in the public who are interested in even helping the Navajo Nation. You've yeah. closed all the tourist areas mm -hmm. and you've asked tourists and people who are not, you know, from the Navajo Nation just to not visit at this time. What's your message to the public um, outside of Navajo land? Well, uh, you know, we appreciate all our visitors every year coming to the Navajo Nation to, uh, you know, experience uh, Navajo, experience Navajo people's culture, tradition, and their way of life. And, and, you know, throughout the world today, right now, and throughout the country, it's, it's really no, no time to be traveling. And uh, <clears throat> we're just asking our visitors to please respect the sovereignty of our Navajo Nation, you know, and uh, uh, where we close all our tourism destinations or point of interest throughout uh, our nation. And uh, right now there's, I mean, there's an emergency clear across the country and uh, to limit the spread of COVID-19 everywhere, we, the best place to be is to be at home. And we just ask our, our visitors to, uh, you know, respect our laws and, and our authorities here on the Navajo Nation. So, you know, 
we, we say that with all due respect. And of course, once the, uh, the virus uh, goes away, and I'm sure there'll be a vaccine sometime soon, you know, tur- tourists and our visitors, those uh, doors will be once again open to experience the Navajo Nation. And uh, President Nez, Navajo people, like other tribal people, indigenous people across the country, around the world, are resilient people. Um, oh, yes. You know, a 150-year treaty was oh, yeah. uh, commemorated for the Navajo Nation, and you talked a little bit about a disease and survival. Um, just what's your message to indigenous people, indigenous nations, as they're dealing with COVID-19, words of encouragement, and the resilience of indigenous communities? Yeah, and thank you for that, Antonia. And, and you did do an interview uh, when we commemorated the 150th uh, anniversary of our long walk, you know, and, and we've been telling our Navajo citizens out there, we're, we are resilient and we'll overcome this just as we overcame some tough times in our history as uh, Navajo people and, and all the tribes throughout the country. And, and let me just say, you know, in our, in our language, and I said this, many times in, in many interviews that in our Navajo language, you know, and translated into English, that means uh, we're five fingered beings. And, you know, Antonia, if you uh, put your hand up, you have five fingers and I, everyone throughout the, the world, mankind, you know, we're all in this together and we will work together and we will overcome this virus that's taking over our uh, our lands and, and we'll still be here. Uh, we'll still be here 150 plus years from now. And we'll use this as a, as a story of how we worked together, how we overcame this virus and made us stronger, uh, from that. So for all of us, uh, that are on the front lines, you know, Antonia, Navajo Nation Vice President Meyer Leiser and myself, you know, we're one of those leaders that are, are hands-on, and we, we we take the precautions seriously. Don't don't get me wrong, wearing our PPEs out there, but we just want to let our Navajo people know that we we care for them, we love them, and that's why we're out there doing roadblocks and telling everybody to go home. Maybe maybe if they see their president and vice president on the side of the road, letting them know that uh, they need to be at home, maybe they'll listen uh, a little bit more to the recommendations and the requirements that are out there uh, throughout the country and throughout our Navajo Nation. So we're all in this together. We'll overcome together and we'll become stronger from this uh, event that's taking place. Thank you, Navajo Nation President Jonathan Nez. Thank you. Thank you. God bless.